We'll start off with Christian Winfield from the New York Daily News. Hey, what's going on, Nick? Um, just a quick question. You know, obviously Robert Williams had that big impact in the first game just by his defensive presence in the paint. I think he had nine blocks and was able to switch a lot and, and defend guys on the perimeter as well. Uh, I'm wondering, specifically as it pertains to his ability to protect the rim, uh, is there anything that you can do to, to kind of stop him from being able to rotate over and, and kind of contest some of those shots? Or is it, do you have to maybe space yourself out, maybe stretch yourself out to the three-point line to kind of keep him out of the paint? Like, how, how do you kind of deter him from being able to stop so many shots at the rim? Yeah, he had a hell of a game. I mean, he was just he was just real active. We, I think we just need to utilize pump face more and just be more more aware of where he is on the court because obviously he's, he's jumping at pretty much everything. But, you know, credit to him, he had a good game. So we just got to adjust, adjust him a little bit and just know where he is at all times. Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Nick, uh, you only got uh, uh, 11 minutes the other night, but it was a very productive 11 minutes. Do you sense that they're just trying to break you in because you're a young player, or do you think your role might expand uh, a lot as this series progresses? I honestly have no idea, but I know that it was good to get out there and get my feet wet. It was my first playoff game, just feeling the different intensity of the game, and we had our, our fans in the building, which was huge. We definitely felt their energy, so... You know, like I said, I just have to stay ready and be be ready for whatever minutes that, you know, the, the coaches staff that decides that they want me to play. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Nick. I, I'm curious. I mean, you had, you did have, uh, what, maybe four minutes in the fourth quarter. You had some meaningful second half minutes. What, what has Steve told you uh, that he wants to see from you as he discussed you know, your role going forward? Has he talked about your ability to switch? I and mean, what kind of things has he talked about wanting to see from you going forward in the postseason? Yeah, obviously, this is a this is pretty much a whole new season, the postseason. So just me building off of what I did in the regular season, affecting the game defensively, bringing the intensity off the bench, and, you know, being able to guard one through five, being able to protect the rim. I had a few plays last game where I was a little late, so just being being all the way engaged and pick, piggybacking off of what I what I was able to do in a regular season, which is just being that, that energy guy for us and helping us out a lot on the defensive end. Back to Christian Winfield. Hey, Nick, I, I remember you saying uh, earlier this season that you don't shoot a lot of threes in this offense because it's not what they ask you to do. You know what I'm saying? That you don't necessarily have to shoot them on a game-by-game -game basis. But I'm still, you know, wondering where you are in terms of your confidence level and your ability to be able to take them and make them right now. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if that's what I was asked to do, but I'm just playing my role, honestly. They don't need me to shoot threes. I'm playing in the dunker, so I'm, a, I'm more of a live threat right now. So that's just, that's what I'm doing. I'm on a championship team. I'm just, everybody has to, you know, make sacrifices. So I'm not tripping. I'm just, you know, doing what I have to do. I'm, on, I'm in the rotation and getting playoff minutes. So I'm just playing my role and doing that to the best of my ability. Steve Lichtenstein with WFAN. Hey, Nick, I mean, that was your first playoff game. Uh, how do you feel you did in like managing the energy and the excitement in terms of uh, you know, staying uh, within the game plan and not picking, making uh, mistakes like fouls or something like that? Yeah, I think I played well. I, I came out and had two quick fouls, but you know, my energy is pretty consistent. I always play with a high level of energy. So the, the energy level is it's not too much. You can just, you can get, get away with a lot more. You can be a lot more physical, which is, which is cool. But I mean, I'm still, I'm still filling everything out and I'm excited to get back out there on the floor today. Chris Mulholland with Nets Daily. Hey, what's up, Nick? Uh, but when you're heading out to your first playoff game, what were the emotions that you were feeling? Like, what were you feeling heading into that playoff? And then on top of that, like, what was the best advice that you were going into that game? So what was the best piece of advice? Best piece of advice and, like, what were your emotions going into your first playoff game? My emotions, I was ready. I mean, going out there, I think we had, like, 13,000 13, fans. That was – we definitely felt that energy. And I think it's been probably over a year since – I played a basketball game with fans in the arena, so I was excited. I mean, every, every every Hooper loves to play in that type of atmosphere, and I think that's something that we kind of take for, took for granted. Um, and as far as as far as advice, I mean, the intensity level definitely was picked up, but that's something that is 
it's not hard to adjust to. You're able to get away with a lot more. And I think I think it's cool. You know, you can't be out there complaining for fouls. You just got to play basketball. Back to Brian Lewis with the post. Hey, Nick, uh, you mentioned it's been a year or more since you had played in front of fans. I mean, we're a year on from George Floyd, so I understand it's a little bit off topic, but I'm just curious whether that's been a topic of discussion within the locker room, uh, whether guys are discussing that and how things have changed, how things maybe haven't changed enough. Is that, has that been something that has been that you guys have been talking about in the, the down minutes that you get? Yeah, I mean, you know, our condolences always go out to the families of George Floyd, but it's just, it hurts that that's something that we still have to talk about today in 2021. And we do have discussions about it, certain guys from time to time, and just thinking of ways that, that we can help and ways that we can make a change. But, you know, that's just, that's where we are in today's society. And, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Last question, Matt Brooks with Nets Daily. Hey, Nick, you mentioned last week that the uh, you got a piece of advice from Blake just saying that the physicality was going to be a big thing that you were going to have to adjust to. Was that your biggest takeaway coming away from this game one? Yeah, the physicality and just the every possession just means so much more. But you can't go out there overthinking and, you know, try playing not to, to make mistakes. You just got to go out there and play freely and just, you know, Use your, use your mind and just go out there and have fun. I think that's that's the biggest thing, just going out there and just, just hooping. Thanks, Nick. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank